Hello there, welcome to Proper DIY. My name is Stuart Matthews. The sun is out, the spring is here. So today I'm going to show you how I make these very smart lined wooden planters for plants. To make these planters I use C16 CLS 38 by 63 timber, 2x3 in old money, which is readily available these days and probably the best value timber around. I set up a stop block on my mitre saw as I'm going to need 24 side pieces all exactly the same length. Even though this timber's got a square end I started by trimming each one again just to make it consistent with the other cuts. You'll see at the time of filming, I've got a left hand thumb injury. I'm afraid this isn't caused by a major power tool accident, nothing nearly as exciting as that. I actually had an altercation with a cucumber while cutting it up. The cucumber one. I'm cutting these at 395mm, which means after trimming the end and cutting six pieces from the timber, I'm left with only around about 10mm waste. I then cut another four pieces slightly longer at a 45 degree mitre to make the top of the planters. So on to the build. I'm actually building here upside down so the fixings are hidden. So I started by choosing the best face of the timber and placing that face downwards. I then glue the mitre corners to each other, although obviously being ingrained this won't be a particularly good bond, so I also put a countersunk screw through each corner to give it some additional strength. These will be hidden with filler and painted over later. The next row of timber I orientate on the edge rather than on the flat, and this is lined up exactly with the inside face of the top ring that's now on the bottom, if you know what I mean. These are glued and screwed with 80mm screws all the way through into the top ring. To ensure getting a really tight fixing, it's important here that the hole that you drill through the timber to be fixed has a big enough diameter that the screw doesn't bite onto that but bites onto the timber below. I set the length of the drill bit in my drill so that it would just penetrate a few millimetres into this timber below, acting as an alignment hole. So the last 15-ish millimetres is not piloted, ensuring a really tight fixing. The next row of timber is fixed in exactly the same way, but it's staggered relative to the last, creating a stretcher bond type effect on the corners with the timber. For the third layer onwards, I also need to make sure that the holes I was drilling did not line up with the screws in the previous ring. It's then just a matter of repeating the process. I fixed six side rows as well as the top section to get the height I wanted, but you can really do more or less depending on the size you want and how much timber you want to use. So I've just left this overnight and the glue and the filler is now fully cured. I've still got these bottom legs to go on but I think I'm going to leave these free until I get the liner in and fix the liner because it's going to be easier without these legs in the way. Structurally it's completely finished and, and I can feel that the wood glue has taken over from the screws and it's now like one big monolithic lump of timber. And if I wanted to take that apart I'd need a big sledgehammer so essentially all those screws that I put in are now really not doing anything, it's the glue has taken over. So I think I need to do a bit of sanding on the filler and then it'll be ready for some undercoat. Other than making sure that the filler I use to hide the screws is sanded down, I don't think items like this that are going to sit in the garden in all weathers really need a fine sanding. 
In fact, even though I'm painting these, it'd still be nice to see the wood grain texture through the paint. To help protect the wood from the future weather, I'm paying particular attention here to painting the joints of the planter and especially the exposed end grain. This is where I think the risk from future rain and moisture will be the highest. I found with this type of paint I really had to make sure I mixed it well before starting. I always find this best done with a long screwdriver. That's what they're made for, aren't they? Once again here I'm concentrating on getting really good coverage on any gaps or joints and the end grain. All the painting is now complete and dried and there's three coats on there. There's a primer plus two coats of this Cuprinol Garden Shades and I must admit after the first coat I thought I'd made a mistake because it was all sort of blotchy and streaky and not very nice at all but the second coat really tidied it up and it's ended up as a really quite nice durable sheen on it as well and I like the colour as well so actually I'm quite impressed with Garden Shades definitely be using that again. So what I've got left to do is firstly to install the liner on the inside that's going to stop the soil touching the wood. The material I'm going to use for that is this damp proof membrane type plastic. It doesn't really matter what type of plastic you use. I think it has to be hard wearing and black so you can't really see it. The way I'm going to be fixing that is initially upside down at the top. I'll staple on this batten and then I'll fold it over so you won't be able to see any of the fixings at the top. Once I've done that I can put the legs on. I'll also install a couple of treated boards at the bottom there just obviously to stop the soil falling out and then that will be job just about done. So I think it's important that I get on and do this because I can't wait to go down to the garden centre and spend some more money on plants. I used a single sheet of plastic to go around the inside plus a bit of an overlap to ensure a good seal. This is a bit of an awkward job because of the internal size of the planter or the external size of me, one or the other, together with what seemed like metres of plastic to deal with. In some ways this is a little bit like upholstering. The more you staple and fix, the easier things get until you're finished. Once the liner was in, I could now fix the final two timbers on the bottom and some treated boards on top of these from the inside, making sure that there were small gaps left between them for drainage at the bottom. I then stapled a piece of weed control fabric on top of this to make sure I don't get any soil washout through these bottom drainage holes with the water. Then finally screwed on four plastic feet so the timber won't be in direct contact with the wet ground during its life. So the planters are finished and fully planted up and looking absolutely lovely on this sunny day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel, which are projects all around the house and garden. And if you're feeling really brave, please subscribe. So from a lovely spring day, I'll see you next time.